Imagine if Jakiro got his level 10 attack range talent at level 1, his ice path also does a few hundred damage. Store his macro pyre into a portable form that also affects buildings and reduce magic resistance. Change his attack speed slowing ability into an AoE disarm. Then also make him a universal hero. You basically get the OP support hero Techies in 7.33c. Too long didn't watch, Techies abilities are bastard. His base stats are stupid strong, and he wins lanes without ever falling off. Buy these starting items, make these strong support items, and situationally these items. Take this skill view, throw bomb, kaboom, win game. But longer version. Techies is currently the most picked hero in high immortal pubs and ranks among the most contested picks in competitive Dota. Which is probably a sentence all Dota players never ever expect to hear. But for people who still have PTSD from 2 hour long Techies games from years ago, Techies has been reworked since 7.31. This rework is so drastic that Techies is said to have been removed from the game, so much so that Techies spammers like Sir Action Slacks have just completely stopped playing the hero. Current Techies is really more like an overbuffed Jack hero, and not the cancer inducing nightmare that will make 9 players in the game regret pressing the find match button. So, it's probably a good idea to reread their abilities. Their first ability throws a sticky bomb, which explodes after 2 seconds to do AoE damage and slow. If an enemy hero is in the initial AoE, it will stick to them and slow them before exploding. This follows them through blink and stuff. Their second ability, Reactive Taser, gives you bonus movement speed for 6 seconds. Enemies attacking techies will get disarmed, and then at the end of the 6 seconds, everybody in the AoE around techies gets disarmed. Blastoff throws Techies into an AoE to do damage and stun enemies. Techies take non-lethal damage based on a percentage of their current HP. The ultimate ability, Proximity Mines, has 3 charges and places a mine that cannot be stacked in the same AoE. Mines cannot be reviewed by True Sight and only kabooms when going into the AoE. The explosion also reduces magic resistance and does less damage the further away from the mine. They also last indefinitely. Enemies can destroy the mines in one hit, but certain heroes do not have enough attack speed or range when walking into the radius to destroy it. Techies also has an innate ability, Mine Fuel Sign, that makes mines within the radius invulnerable. Aghanim Shot upgrades Reactive Taser, allowing it to be cast on allies, and with Shot, Reactive Taser also deals damage when enemies get disarmed. This can proc multiple times, which doesn't happen often, but it's funny when it happens in a pro match. At least it's only me. <laughs> At least I truly need. Zip! With Aghanim Scepter, Minefuel Sign now creates a Minefuel which is triggered when enemies move into the sign. Enemies who move in this AoE are damaged. Although these red circles look super scary, they are just part of the visual effect. The damage is simply dealt every time at least 200 units is moved. Because of the ridiculous range and AoE of Techies abilities, they are generally quite easy to hit even with their slower animations. Having allies set up is nice, but not really necessary. Sticky Bombs can set up for Blast Off and vice versa. And these two spells are generally what you will use in the laning stage with Sticky Bombs to harass and Blast Off to secure a kill. The Techies full combo goes like this. Use Reactive Taser, wait until it's about half the circle, Blast Off, Sticky Bomb, then place 3 proximity mines by spam clicking in a circle. Waiting for half the duration of Reactive Taser will allow you to disarm enemies immediately after they come out of the stun from Blast Off. So, they won't be able to attack the mine. This combo, assuming you are level 6, does about 1100 damage. With Shot and assuming super underleveled at level 6, it does 1700 damage. But this full combo does use a lot of mana. And in real games, you sometimes can't afford to wait the 3 seconds before you follow up stun. So most of the time, you'll find it hard to use this full combo, especially in the early game. Instead, you'll probably be doing the simpler combo. Sticky Bomb and Blast Off, then one or two mines depending on how much damage you think you need. Without Taser, it is possible to kill the mines. But in real matches, your allies will probably be around. 
forcing opponents to choose between taking damage from the mines or your allies. As for placing of the mines, it's actually not that difficult to do. Just go into demo and click on proximity mines to see the radius. You can place the mines outside that radius. All you need is a little practice. And done. <laughs> Alternatively, Let's you go. can also just try spam clicking. In fights, you generally play the outskirts as a long range support, throwing sticky bombs until you find an opportunity to use your combo. Then, deciding whether you want to taser for the disarm or to reposition using the move speed. Blast off can get cancelled mid jump, so try to play out of vision. After you get your shard from the tormentor, you can use that to save allies being focused as well. Just remember that it requires one additional click after getting the shard. So, now you know what his skills do. And I think that it's pretty clear that Techies no longer have the same playstyle that it was known for years ago. Sometimes it still does work. But this is more of something in your kit, rather than what you rely on to win games. Which is to say, primarily, Mines is a damage spell, but the extra charges can and should be used for vision and to deny certain high ground like, say, the Twin Gates. Dyer's top attack is under attack. Or to provide vision to the ward. And don't forget that Mine Fuel Sign doesn't cost anything, so you can plant it if you have the time. Using mines to contest runes is also highly impactful. Or if camps are about to respawn anyway, just use mines to casually farm a camp. But of course, if his spells were simply strong, there wouldn't be any reason why Techies is the top support pick this patch. His spells didn't change that much after the rework, and people have always known that his spells were strong. What pushed him over the edge was, to nobody's surprise, that Techies became a universal hero. Techies was already a hero with pretty high armor and high move speed, and these type of stats are usually compensated by having lower damage, lower attack range, or sometimes spells that are only situationally useful. So, your Jack Hero and Shadow Shaman are pretty tanky range supports with high attack damage, but they don't really have the long attack range. Something like a Warlock who is also pretty tanky does have the range, but his spells just aren't useful all the time. Techies, however, used to belong to the category of supports with powerful spells and range, but garbage at right clicks. I have a lot of damage now, I can't see us. <laughs> Which is usually like Crystal Maiden or Leech, who for example have powerful spammable spells and long attack range, but low HP and armor. Universal change means that with a few stat items, Techies have a lot of right click damage, negating his previous weakness. Here is about 1 minute of Omar laning with Techies, and we're going to count how many right clicks Techies does and compare that with Oracle. And the result is 19 right clicks against heroes and 2 on creeps for techies versus the 11 right clicks on heroes for oracle. So that is 10 more right clicks over another support because of the attack range and given the attack damage that's 580 more damage techies dealt before reductions. And even if we just count the extra damage from the universal change, the 5.5 extra damage from the small stat items is an extra 115 damage over 21 right clicks. In comparison, Oracle not only has a lower attack range, but also lower damage. And to make things sweeter for the Techies package deal, Techies also has a larger mana pool and mana regen compared to other spell spamming supports like Crystal Maiden and Leech. Techies doesn't have to buy mangoes as a starting item, and can just make do with stats. And with that understanding, I hope you can now see why pros are going starting items like these as support Techies. At least one set of tangles, at least one sentry for blocking or unblocking camps, two branches, then depending on the game, you may get a stick, blood granite, more stats, or very rarely, win lays. I like going one set of tangles, one blood granite, one sentry, two branches, gauntlets, and a circlet because it builds into one embracer very nicely, and most importantly, spends all 600 starting gold to pacify my OCD. But that's just my preference. 
Item build wise, you don't really need anything because your abilities are already pretty good. You pretty much build whatever you think can help your team. And in this patch, this just means pervies or solar crest, then into drums or mech most of the games. Then sometimes other items like pipe, lotus, or even spirit vessel depending on what your teammates need but don't want to build. Situationally, eels can also be a strong item as a combo breaker. Obviously, classic support items like Glimmer Cape or Force Stuff are still always strong considerations. It's just that Solar Crescent Pervis is just really strong this patch. And they also give what a lot of supports want, health, mana regen, and a way to buff your team. Another part of the reason why they are strong is because you can buy components to make you stronger at the moment. So don't be afraid to buy a casual crown if you think you can just freely right click in lane, then go back to boots. Oh well, if you think you need boots first to kite, then go boots first. For your skill build, you generally want to max Sticky Bomb first, going 4111 by level 7. If you can find a use for Taser early, 211 by level 4 is also useful, or even taking it at level 2 if you think you can use it in lane. When next you turn around. Try to max Blast off later, then Taser. As for talents, Pro players don't all go the same talent tree, but generally right side with the magic resist at level 10 and blast off damage at 15 is the safer choice. Most skims as support end before level 20 because this patch is quite snowbally, so I'll let you decide which level 20 and 25 talent you want. Because we never know, there may be a time when that plus 252 damage comes into handy. And if you want to play a bit greedier, there is also the techies official way of playing which is to spam stats, sometimes even foregoing regen in the starting items for the extra chonk and bonk in the bounty rune fights. Then you either suicide to tower while the enemies are dead, or ferry more regen. Usually he goes into a double bracer, sometimes even three, which makes him super tanky. Then going Ether Lands into Hex, or sometimes straight into Hex. Then finally he finishes up the build with Aetherial Blade for more damage. The skill build is largely the same, but Techies officials likes the proximity cooldown talents more, which makes sense because this is more useful for solo queues. This is the more pub stompy build, where you support by eliminating your carries problems. As for Aghanims, I haven't really seen good usage of it, and the other support items just feel too strong to forego. So that's the end of the non-comprehensive guide. Hope you have fun with Sticky Bomb Man.